So we bobbed into the greenhouse at home today because yesterday we had a bit of a shock really looking around the plot of greenhouse at the tomatoes. So we thought we ought to come today and just have a really good check of our home greenhouse tomatoes because they're growing in the same make of grow bag as the ones down the plot and they're badly affected by contaminated compost. Yeah, we could. We knew exactly what it was, didn't we? Because yeah, of we've past had it experience. We've had it before, and we thought probably ought to have gone away by now. Clearly, it hasn't. So, looking around our tomatoes in the greenhouse, they look all they right. Look okay. There's absolutely no signs at the minute of any damage from either well either amino pyrrolids or what's the other one chlorpyrrolid it's a hormonal um, pesticide which is a component in a lot of lawn and grass weed killers so these look fine but there again the ones down the plot look fine a week ago but it's a question I think of if they find a little bit of contaminated compost when they're growing and that's when the problems start. The smaller ones up here look okay as well. Yeah, we've got some small ones, these little ones will grow on in these pots and produce tomatoes. Mm, doesn't look to be any signs, does it? And they? they all look okay and they're all potted on in the same stuff, yeah. That one over there's got a bit of a funny colour in the middle. Which one? That one over there, look. This one? Yeah. I think it's yeah. not too sure. But Problem is, you can buy the same brand of compost, can't you? Well, year it's like year and you're yeah, okay, but, but then you well, get a batch. I mean, it's, it's even worse than that because these grow bags were bought along with the ones down the allotment, and it looks like these could be all right and the allotment ones not. Which is strange. Anyway, we've been affected by this problem before, and it wasn't last year, 2008. 11 years ago. 11 years ago, and we'll show you a little bit of video and some other stuff that we did then, when everybody was going to clear the problem up, but Clearly obviously they haven't, have they? they haven't, no. actually sure that was our pile of manure but it wasn't actually that was the pile we had when gardeners Welk came and did an interview the problem was we didn't really know what this was when our potatoes went like this we had no idea what the problem was although somebody else's had done the same hadn't they further right. upon yeah. the clock in fact, we were one or two weren't they mm. all got the same problem and then i read something on the rhs didn't i that they'd suspected there was a problem with manure and had anybody had this That's sort of right. thing and happen then, then we sort of all twigged that we'd all got manure from the same supplier and we all had the same problem so we contacted the RHS and really our case was the thing that made it more conclusive, wasn't it? Because we'd yeah. all got manure from the same source and it had only affected our plots in the places where we put the manure. So there wasn't really any other explanation. So as in this bit here, we had one set of potatoes that had been grown in some of the manure and they got this fern-like foliage. The row at the back hadn't been manured and they were perfectly okay. And going round the site, people who hadn't used the manure, their plants were perfectly okay, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Everybody who'd used the manure had the same symptoms. It was horse manure in our case, yeah. wasn't it? So these were the symptoms we were asked to look out for. We were told that were... Cooked. Yeah, these cooked leaves which... If, if you look on the video that we'll do of our tomatoes in a bit, you'll see exactly the same thing. They look like spoons, don't they? And they're yeah. quite hard. The weed killer, the um, amino pyrrolid is hormonal and it affects how the plants grow. 
and this is what it did some to tomato plants on the allotment. And that was tomato plants in someone's um, polytunnel, polytunnel yeah. where he'd put copious amounts of manure. All hoping for a good crop of tomatoes, mm. was only to have this happen. In fact, to be fair, that was the first sign, wasn't it? It was, yeah. But we didn't put two and two together at that stage. That's an aubergine, which was also in the polytunnel. And broad beans. And then that's a runner bean, isn't it? Yeah. You can just see how stiff the leaves look when as well. When we realised what the issue was, we thought, we ought to really try and publicise it as much as possible, didn't we? We did. So we had a website already and we decided that we'd devote a section of it to finding out as much information as we possibly could about amino pyrrolase and, and its effects. Problems. Yeah. So we, um, we put lots of photographs to show people basically what the symptoms were and we contacted lots of different people to discuss the problem. We contacted Dow Agrochemicals, uh, we contacted the PSD which was the Pesticide Safety Directorate, we contacted MEPs, MPs, anybody we could think of. We had quite a long conversation with the Pesticide uh, Safety Director. I think they got quite fed up with us and we posted everything, everything that they said and our replies and sort of any information that they could give us, really. We did the same with Dow, didn't we, yeah. and, and the RHS, which we'll come to later. We also asked any victims to contact us so that we could get some idea of just how widespread the problem was. And it seemed to be incredibly widespread. In fact, most of the country was affected in some way or another. The different colours on the map indicate the different years that people were sending us reports. We also got people to explain to us what the problems were and we got some very detailed reports from some people which came from all over the country. Got North Yorkshire, Gloucestershire, Shropshire. Some people had businesses really ruined by it if they had a small holding. Brighton there. Shropshire, North Yorkshire, Gloucestershire. Staffordshire there. And it wasn't just England, we've got Scotland there as well, Ayrshire and Glasgow. It was a very, very widespread problem. We contacted Anybody who'd listen, we contacted MEPs, we talked to Dow, in fact, they sent a representative to see us and we published everything they said to us. We contacted the RHS and media of all sorts. Even the USA joined in. Newspapers sort of published articles we went on forums and told people about it on the forums we went on Gardener's World we went on the politics show we went on Radio Leeds several times so now I think it's time we went and had a look at what we've got this year I think I think so yeah is. last week I noticed that one of the tomato plants in the plot of greenhouse was looking a little bit odd. 
thought at first it was maybe just a bit short of water so I gave him some water but then it started looking rather odd unmistakable thought, really isn't it I know those signs we've had those before years ago but clearly it's back again it's in 2008 wasn't it, it when was. we first had this problem with one, potatoes with potatoes and that was in manure rather than in yeah in horse manure compost and we thought initially well maybe it's just that one plant it's in a grow bag with two other plants and the plants at the other side but at the minute look all right but now it's catching so if we first of all we'll just pop down this side we've got this one plant here that's now also showing some signs of fern like foliage again we're pretty sure what that is and if we move over to the other side things it's worse are now at looking this side worse. isn't it yeah so we've got this one here this one's particularly bad another one there really fern like yeah. new growth but if you come over to this one we've got other symptoms haven't we that you can show like it develops a sort of a cupping like a spoon and also the veins become very prominent and the leaves sort of become sort of stiffish don't they yeah it's that's definitely the worst one isn't it? it is yes but this time it's not manure is it no and there is another one along this side isn't there the, the first one yeah into the greenhouse is now starting starting to go but what we were saying is that people say that there's this test that you can do by growing something in some of the compost and you grow some beans or something that's susceptible to this yeah we didn't actually say did we that this time it's not manure it's the grow bags the grow that bags. seem affected yep. because the grow bags they actually one of the components is green waste and this particular weed killer tends to be used on grass and lawns and so when the, we, the lawns are clipped or the animals eat the grass the weed killer stays in the plant in the bits of grass clippings and it doesn't release until the grass clippings start to rot down then the, in, the pesticide releases itself and causes the sorts of problems you can see here in susceptible plants, especially things like tomatoes, potatoes, beans, peas, that sort of thing. I mean, you can be growing things in it and not realise it if it's an unsusceptible plant like brassicas or squashes or something like that. But, but the test of growing, this supposed test of trying to grow something if we'd have taken some soil out of this grow bag, this one that's got these three tomatoes in, we may well have chosen something and the end tomato is growing fine, it's not really showing any signs. So we'd have seen something come up and gone, yes, that's all right, but clearly it isn't because the tomato growing in the middle of the grow bag has found some contaminated component in that grow bag. The contamination's not necessarily spread all the way through, no, is not, it? It's not like something that's sprayed on, is it? Or no. You, it, it, if, you've just got to find the right bit of compost that's got something in it. Well, if somebody, if, say, the, the manufacturer had used green manure and they'd incorporated it into the compost, they'd have used lots of other green manure as well. So when they mix it up, the contaminated stuff would be spread through a, quite a large batch and you wouldn't know whether you got a, a batch that had got the contamination in or not plus the fact that you don't actually see it until 
the plant material starts to decompose and then it starts to release the contamination. So you could grow things in it for a while and not notice anything and then suddenly, like us, these plants were growing fine and then suddenly, after quite a long time, They've been in we this get this. they grow back over a month. Yeah, and they were fine until this week, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. So the test isn't that reliable. It can prove you've got the contamination, but not, you, you but not that you haven't, which is what you really need. But I mean, one of the things that it seems to be that each year people think this is a new problem, whereas it's actually been going on now for about 11 years. The time before, though, we managed to get Gardener's World to come. We got BBC Radio Leeds to come. The politics show the politics came. show. RHS got involved in it. Kitchen Garden got involved in it. Well, all the all the national newspapers yeah. and local newspapers were but involved. Then ten years or eleven years on, nothing's changed. But I suspect none of the professional growers use what we use. They all have some system of cleverly making mm. their own compost and they're immune from this sort of problem. Well, we actually had the uh, representative from Dow Agrochemicals came, didn't he? Yeah. And he spent ages with us. We had lots of email discussions with... And they were coming up with a system that was going to stop this stuff right. being used and getting into the gardening chain. Well, obviously... But we had lots of work. conversations with what was then the PSD, which is now... CRD, which I think is Chemical Regulation Department. It was even deba debated in Parliament. We had MPs involved. Um, they took the, the pesticide off for a little while, didn't they? And yeah. Then it came back again because the Dar farmers really money wanted rules. it. Yeah. And also they thought that if they changed the labelling, it would solve the problem. But that was when they thought it was just amino pyrrolid that was causing the problem. But now it's entering the amateur chain with clopyrrolid, which is used in amateur lawn pesticides, lawn weed killers, which is how I think it gets into the green waste chain because the label says don't compost the waste. So people put it in their green bin, the green council bin, and some of that ends up used as green waste by people like the, uh, the composting companies. So, And you can't actually ever prove conclusively that the compost is to blame, so there's a get-out clause there, isn't yeah. there? Anyway, we'll just have to see how they go now. Mm. For the rest, there's obviously nothing we can do. We can't start again, really. Sometimes things do recover, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Because when we had a problem with potatoes, the potatoes recovered. But we were a bit wary of <laughs> just actually eating them. eating them because obviously the chemical was still sort of within the plants, which is why you should never compost any plants that are affected because... It'll just perpetuate the problem. And it was even so serious, wasn't it, that Dow Agrochemicals came and removed uh, manure from any, yeah. anyone yeah. who was affected. Yeah.